Hello, my friends. May God bless you all. And may He give you at least what He has given me. Because that is, or it is, what makes us happy, what our dream, that you may have at least what He has given us. Do you believe in that? Well, whether you believe it or not, it doesn't matter. This is my desire before God. However, what I wanted to talk to you about is the following. Pay attention, please. It's very important. What we spoke about yesterday in the meeting, and it's what I'd like to share with you here today. We have that case where the ten leprous men cried out to Jesus. And Jesus immediately said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And they obeyed the word of the Lord Jesus. They obeyed Him. Just that. They just obeyed. And then, all ten of them, as they were making their way towards the priest, they noticed that they had been healed. Well, we know that all ten of them were sinners, common people. Were they children of God? No, I don't think so. But they believed in Jesus. They believed in the power of Jesus, and therefore they were healed. Yet, only one of them came back to thank the Lord Jesus for what He had done for them. And Jesus said to, to him, Go, your faith has saved you. So the other nine left and went to take care of their life. And this is what has been happening. It's happened in the ministry of the Lord Jesus. It's happened in the ministry of the apostles. And it has been happening inside of the churches today. At least in the universal church, this has happened a lot. Ten people are healed. But only one come back to thank and to remain in the faith. And what is the difference then? Those nine leprous men that were healed, they had faith. Jesus knew they would be healed. Jesus knew of their faith, but he also knew that they would not come back to thank him, that they would go look after their life, and that was it. Oh, you blessed me. Thank you so much, my Lord. Amen. Let me go forward. But only one came back to thank God. You see, my dear friend, that faith does not depend on you having rights or not. If you are a child or not, it does not matter. As long as you manifest your faith, you receive the miracle. Any person, whether they are good or evil, holy or a sinner, it doesn't matter. They will receive the miracle as long as they believe. They obey the word of God. At least in that specific moment, they will receive the blessing. However, in order to become a child of God, the person has to have an experience, a personal experience with God. There is no doubt about that. Jesus resurrected Lazarus. Lazarus was a child of God. Why? Was it because he was resurrected? No, because his sisters and Jesus already knew Lazarus. So he was a child of God, but later on he died again. And everybody who was blessed back then also died. But the difference is that 
all those who are blessed were blessed because of their faith. Faith in the blessing that they had asked. They had asked. So they were blessed because they asked for the blessing. They expressed a faith and they were blessed. They were touched, they were healed and so on and so on. However, in order to become a child of God, there is no doubt, my dear friend, that you have to be born of God, to be born of the Holy Spirit, to be born of water through the baptism in water and of the Holy Spirit. The water baptism is the burial of ourselves, our soul, our flesh, of our heart. When we want to get baptized in water, when we determine that we will be baptized, what we are saying is the following, Lord, I do not want to live for myself anymore. I don't want to live to do my will anymore. I want to do your will. But for that to happen, I am dying for this world. I am burying my flesh, my desire, my ego in the waters so that I can start a new life with you. So when the person goes to the water baptism with this faith, then the Holy Spirit, when the person leaves the water, then the Holy Spirit makes them start a new life. And that's when indeed He comes upon them. It may happen during the baptism in water or later on, but He will come because that person expressed a faith to live for God and not to conquer material benefits. Because in order to conquer benefits here in this world, any type of faith will do. Jesus said, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, everyone who asks, which means everybody, sinners and holy people, everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. So the doors of the Universal Church are open every single day for those who want, those who believe, those who want to seek, those who want to knock, those who want to ask, for them to be blessed. But we also know that out of 10, only 10%, I would say, will truly be born of God. In the universe of those who are blessed and healed and prosperous, those who had their life transformed, I believe, this is a personal belief, that only 10% will be saved. Which means the soul will be saved. The heart is made new because Jesus gives a new heart to them. And this is the purpose of the campaign of Israel. If you, my dear friend, desire to have blessings, you don't even need to take part in the campaign. You can just go to any meeting, for example, today is for prosperity, for people to prosper. Those who believe come to seek prosperity and you receive. Tomorrow is for health. We deal with your health. Wednesday is for the soul, salvation of the soul. On Thursday, solution to problems in your love life your family, the love therapy. Friday, we have the spiritual cleansing to remove the bad luck, to remove the curse, to remove the devil, the guide from hell that has been destroying people's lives. People who are victim of witchcraft, voodoo and the like. On Saturday, we have the chain of prayer for in the impossible cases. The same thing. It's for people who believe in the impossible. The fast of the impossibles. On Sunday, it's the Holy Spirit. Whoever is thirsty to receive the Holy Spirit, Sunday and Wednesday is for them. So, the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God 
has one day specified to each problem, each need. Now, what is the greatest need of mankind? It's to be born again. Because if they are not born again, they are not God's children. And if they are not God's children, they will roam around this world without direction. Because the Holy Spirit, when I say the Holy Spirit, such joy comes into my soul. The Holy Spirit is the guide of God's children. Only the children of God have the right to be guided by the Holy Spirit because the promise Jesus made is fulfilled when he said, listen, I will not leave you orphans. I will send another comforter and he will guide you into all truth. So he guides those who are his children and whoever is not his child, he won't. The person may even have faith to receive and conquer the whole world even. But to be a child of God, they have to seek, they have to run after it, they have to focus, focus all their life, their spirit, their soul, their body into seeking to have this experience with God. Because it's not just for anybody. It's available for everyone. Everyone who asks, who seeks, who knocks, because it's what Jesus promises. He said, for everyone who asks, receives. Receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Which means, there is a faith to conquer material things, to conquer things in this world, the physical needs, bread, fish, prosperity, health, love life, family, marriage. There is a faith to conquer anything from God. Now, in order to be born of him, to be his child, the person has to place all of their faith, all of their strength, all their vigor. They have to put their mind, their soul, their heart, everything they can, everything they have available. What do they have? What do you have? What do you have to offer in order to receive the spirit of adoption, let's say it this way, as a child of God, or better, in order for you to be regenerated, in order for you to be born of the Holy Spirit, what do you have to do? What do you have to do? It only depends on you. It only depends on you. God gives the direction. God gives the guidance. However, you have to choose. You have to make this choice. It's your decision. This is the greatest blessing, the blessing of all blessings. Have you imagined having the spirit of the Creator inside of you? Have you imagined? Have you imagined you having the mind, the mind, the thought, the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ inside of you, guiding your thoughts? Have you imagined you being stamped, stamped, sealed with the spirit of God? Obviously that the devil knows those who have the Holy Spirit and those who don't. So when the person has the Holy Spirit, it's because they are truly children of God. They were truly born of God. Now, when the person doesn't have the Holy Spirit, then there is no guarantee of anything. They can conquer the whole world. 
they can ask and receive anything. But if they do not seek with faith and dedication and total surrender the Lord Jesus with repentance, forgiveness, to forgive people, to do what has to be done, to let go of the stones of the past, to let go of their sins, of their impure life, the wrong life, to let go of their desire, to let go of their friends and enemies, to let go of good luck. Yes, the good luck. Luck is of the devil, just as bad luck. So, if they want to be born of God, they have to let go of the world. They have to let go of the world. And that's what Jesus said to the rich young man who had just inherited a great fortune and he also wanted to inherit the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus said, for that you have to let go of everything, everything that you have. Let go of everything you have and the kingdom of heavens will enter you. The rich man from the story of Lazarus, the rich man was a descendant of Abraham as much as the poor, Lazarus. The difference between them is that Lazarus, besides being a descendant of Abraham, he was also a child of Abraham. In other words, a child of God, child of the faith in the God of Abraham, not the rich man. The rich man was just a descendant of Abraham. Even in hell, he was crying out for Abraham calling him father, but he was wrong because he was in hell. So when a person is a child of God, this person then has the right to receive the Holy Spirit. They have the right. Jesus said, if a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? Which father would do that? None, of course. So he says, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? But unfortunately, people prefer the blessings from this world than the celestial blessing. People prefer to be financially rich and to have the world at their feet and to enjoy the benefits of this world than to enjoy the presence of the Holy Spirit. This is the reality. To enjoy the presence of having the assurance of being a child of God. So, Bishop, tell me, please, how do I know if I have the Holy Spirit? How do I know it? Well, if you are asking this question, it's because you have doubts. And if you have doubts, it's because you don't have Him. Because I don't ask myself this question. I don't ask myself this question. But I will ask myself this question now to show you how is the... Oh, what is God's criteria? So pay attention. So how do I, Bishop Macedo, how do I, a human being, have the assurance that God is with me, that the Holy Spirit is in me? Do you know how? Because I am sure that I am with Him. This assurance is the Holy Spirit that gives me the Holy Spirit Himself confirms this within me. So all those who have doubts whether or not they are baptized in the Holy Spirit is because they are not. Because whoever is, they are not in doubt. They have no doubt at all. No doubt. So I answer this question 
here for many people who have this doubt inside of them be free from this doubt be a new person be born of god and this only happens through the work of the holy spirit it's him that generates us as jesus was generated by the holy spirit the holy spirit can generate you however you have to desire you have to seek it's more than just a want, more than just a desire. You have to put all of your life on the altar. You have to sacrifice everything. Friends, family members, everything, everything, everything. You have to put Jesus as first in your life. And when this happens, then He will give you the Holy Spirit. Tomorrow we are going to be talking more about this subject. May God bless you all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And by the way, I, just a, a quick note here, who are seeking for financial blessings. Bishop Misael today is going to be speaking about a revelation for those who, those who are seeking, those who want to know, what am I going to do? What is the direction in order for me to prosper? I make my campaigns, my purposes, but it still hasn't happened. Why hasn't it happened yet? Because perhaps you are expecting favors from other people, from politicians, from friends, from family members. Today, I am not sure which meeting Bishop Misael will be holding. I don't know the time. But any meeting that you go, he already passed on to his co-servants the revelation that he will give to you today. Here in the Temple of Solomon and in all the universal churches of the Kingdom of God all over the world. May God bless you and I'll see you tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen.